All right, week 18. It's about that time. It's about that time, everybody. The tournaments, the conference tournaments, they're heating up. March Madness is steadily approaching. And, whoo boy, whoo boy, I I'm excited. I'm excited because we got to talk about, let's talk about, you know, the Big 12 first. Let's talk about the Big 12's conundrum first, you know, because a lot of things happened in the Big 12 this week as usual. You know, the top half of the conference really decided to say, hey, let's, let's be insane and be the best, you know, of the best in the best conference in the country. So, you know, Texas, they played up against Baylor and Kansas this week. Again, you know, this is big for Texas. This is big for Chris Beard and boys out there in Austin. And unfortunately, in the final game in Frank Irwin Center against Baylor, they, they, they the horns shot poorly. They couldn't get the, they couldn't get the shots they wanted, you know, because they needed to go with the paint. They just couldn't get there. They had stretches of time where they scored no points against Baylor. Like, and keep in mind, Baylor was kept in check at times as well. So it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense for Texas to just lose a game like that in which they needed to win it. And then they follow that up in Kansas's senior day game against, you know, the Jayhawks and just couldn't win that game either. Could not win that game, could not improve their seeding, which is pretty sad because, I mean, Texas kind of needs to do that. You know, I talked about it in my first episode over on USN, the Big Collective, you know, how Texas needs to improve their seeding. And this is not the way to go. You know, you keep Ochai Abaji in check. You keep this man at under two, at like what, two points the entire game? He didn't make a field goal for a majority of that game. And yet, you still couldn't beat him in overtime. You still couldn't beat the Jayhawks in overtime because you got, you got, you got David McCormack who had a double-double. You got Christian Brown. You got Jalen Wilson. Also, just all three of those guys were stepping up at the right time. I mean, again, Kansas is a talented team. We know this, but, you know, we also know that Kansas is a team that can't control games the way they're supposed to, and Texas keeps letting games get away from them. So this was a perfect type of matchup. And I kind of figured these two would split, but, you know, I just didn't think it would be like that. Yeah, I know. It's sad. It's really sad because Kansas and Baylor clinch a share of the Big 12. Despite the fact that Kansas lost to TCU earlier in the week, yeah, they had to play TCU twice in three days. Yeah, they lost to TCU on Tuesday, but they came back and beat them on Thursday. Yeah, that that's cool. But still, you, you, I, I just can't wrap my head around you know, Marcus Carr playing poorly. And you've got guys like Courtney Raby and Andrew Jones putting, putting their livelihoods on the line all out here like... Like, the, like, those two guys have been here for a pretty long time, and they the way the season has to end for them, the way the regular season has to end for them, it's sad. But at least Coach K's final game got delayed, because who wants to see all that nonsense, all that fanfare? Oh, boy, I'm going to talk, I'm gonna talk about that and get to laughing in a moment here. And then there's also Texas Tech, who lost to Oklahoma State. Yeah, that Oklahoma State that can't go to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, that team. Kind of, kind of, kind of weird. But okay, whatever, man. Whatever. I don't get it. I don't get it. The best conference in basketball beating itself up. I just don't get it. But it is what it is. But yeah, Kansas and Baylor share the Big Twelve. Baylor does not get the tiebreaker over Kansas. It will be Kansas the one, Baylor two. Texas Tech the three and Texas the four, along with TCU rounding out the five. TCU is in, by the way. You know, TCU got the win against Kansas. That cemented them in the tournament. Along with that Texas Tech win last Saturday, that cemented them in anyway. TCU is in. Iowa State, uh, I don't know. You know, again, you know, Baylor was up by 25 at one point to Iowa State. I think Iowa State, despite the fact that they've fallen so hard on flat on their face in fact you know I think they still are pretty much in so that should be six big 12 teams 
right there. So, remember that game where Talison and Delaware had to have a stoppage because of, uh, you know, the whole thing with the arena not being safe to play in? Yeah, that ended up helping Talison out. Talison clinches the CAA. They're the one seed in the CAA. You know, they get the spot over UNC Williamson. You know, instead, so they are the one over UNC Wilmington. And unfortunately for teams like IUPUI, who have only five players in their Horizon League tournament game, it's sad, you know. Sad that IUPUI had to go out this way. Lamar didn't win a conference game, you know. Another, I think there's like, like, I think that's the only team that didn't win a conference game this year. Pretty sad. You know, even IUPUI won a conference game with, with, five, with six players. Not, not five, but six. You know, six player, whoever that guy was, he was out for some reason. But it's, it's just real sad, man. You just, you just can't believe this type of stuff, man. This is college basketball. This is college basketball, man. Whoo, boy. Whoo, boy. Big Ten. Big Ten. What are you doing? I don't know what I don't know what the Big Ten is anymore because it's... It's a conference that cannibalized itself even worse than the Big 12. You know, and it's probably to the conference's detriment because now there's projections saying, like, there's going to be nine teams for the Big Twin, you know, getting into this tournament, which is pure insanity to me. I don't think there's nine worthy t Big Ten tournament teams. But okay, the, the week showed us that they're prop there's probably going to be nine Big Ten teams in anyway, despite the fact that I don't think there should be nine. We're talking... Johnny Hepburn got the three-point victory, you know, clinching play against Purdue that won Wisconsin a share of the Big Ten. Not the Big Ten outright, a share. So, uh, like, you know, we'll talk about why Wisconsin really won a share in a moment, you know, as we get down to the later portions of the week and stuff like that. But then you got things like Nebraska, which uh, is a, and we'll throw those two hand-in-hand in, hand in a moment. Like, they... Nebraska, the Cornhuskers, beat Ohio State. Michigan State, on the other hand, you know, they lost to you know, Michigan and Ohio State, which is insanity. Pure insanity. We're talking Malachi Branham, who's been rising up lately for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Hunter Dickinson, they both cooked the Spartans, cooked them, turned them into nothing but dust. And there was also a surprise by the name of Joey Brunk for the Buckeyes. A big surprise in that Michigan State-Ohio State game. Just a big surprise for them. Like, I mean, this is an Ohio State-Michigan team. You know, two teams that, you know, firstly, Michigan really, you know, they, they have some good wins. They have some good wins in there. You know, I just don't think they're a tournament caliber team, but they're, they might go in it anyway. And that, 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 that's one of those big reasons why. You know, a huge, it was a huge week for Michigan. They had to have this win against Michigan State, and they got it. And they played Ohio State without Hunter Dickinson. You know, Michigan did. Michigan beat Ohio State without Hunter Dickinson. So that pretty much puts Michigan in play. They're in play now for the Big Ten. They're in play, you know, they'll maybe have to win a tournament game or two, but they are certainly in play right off the bubble. Michigan State, on the other hand, they already lost to Michigan. They already lost to Ohio State. They look lackluster against Maryland. You know, this is a team on free fall, and it's looking kind of sad. I still think this team will go to the tournament, but I just think they should be a really low seed, in my personal opinion. But, you know, I'm just not going to, not going to, you know, not going to elaborate further on that because, you know, there's also a team like Rutgers, which is what top four to Big Ten. Thanks to Ron Harper Jr. killing Indiana's bubble hopes. Yeah. You know, despite the fact that Rutgers had to survive against Penn State, Rutgers is a team that's going to be in. Um, you know, the big wins are going to outweigh the bad losses here for Rutgers. I still think they might need, like, one win in the Big Ten tournament, but I think this is a team that's actually in. You know, sad to say, you know, Indiana, they are out. I don't care what guys like Joe Lunardi say. Indiana's out, you know, their bubbles were gone with the, with the Rutgers loss. They were gone-er. They, they were complete goners with the Purdue loss. You know, Indiana has to win the Big Ten tournament now. They have to win it to be, even be able to get in. So, 
pretty sad. Can't say the same, you know, for some other teams, you know, on the bubble that improved themselves in the Big Ten, like Michigan and Rutgers. So, you know, Indiana, not go. I don't think they're going anywhere. I'm sorry. They're just not, you know. Other teams that clinched their uh, conference titles, Houston clinched the American, Arizona easily took the Pac-12, Duke won the ACC, Auburn takes the SEC all by itself, you know, and despite the fact that Providence did clinch the Big East, they got swept by Villanova, it, you know, it was another thriller, but they got swept. UConn also got beat by Creighton, you know, UConn is a team that's also gunning for a top four seed, I don't think they're going to get it, unless they win. Big East tournament themselves. Personally, that's just my that's just me. You know, Providence is gonna have to get it like a higher seed. You know, if they're, they're gonna have to win the Big Ten, the, not the Big Ten, the Big East tournament, they want to get a higher seat themselves. Because I don't think that you know, I don't think the committee and stuff like that, they're not gonna value, you know, Providence that well because they didn't value them that well in that bracket preview a couple weeks ago. So I don't think they're gonna put them, you know that high I think it'll be like a three or four seed where Providence ends up leading more towards the four at this point so they gotta win the Big East tournament you know they gotta win it um let's go on back you know here to the whole Coach K situation Coach K's final game at Cameron Indoor Stadium all sorts of fanfare you know by ESPN two-hour college game there you got a whole mega cast going over on other networks and stuff like that you got a whole fanfare and you got guys and gals paying what eighty thousand dollars to go to this game only for duke to get beat by north carolina four guys for the tar heels go over 20 points armando baco who's been a guy that's you know definitely haven't been talked about as much here you know, and Brady Manic, another guy who hasn't been talked about as much, but a big contributor for the Tar Heels, a big contributor for this Tar Heels team that's going right back to the tournament. They, this is the win that North Carolina needed. This is the one they got. Tournament team. This is a tournament team. This is a team that's going some places. They're going some places. And speaking of Houston, you know, we'll touch on them here because they got whipped by Memphis again, which is insanity to me. Like, we're talking, this Memphis team continued the entire day, you know, against Houston, stealing it from them, just stealing. There were so many steals by Memphis, you know, Houston didn't know what to do. They were getting blowouts in this game. Like, the first game was a shocker. This one was even more of a shocker because I, I'm sitting here just completely flabbergasted at this game. I'm completely flabbergasted at these media experts and stuff like that saying, oh, well, Houston, you know, they can be on the bubble because, you know, they haven't beat anybody into the tournament and stuff like that. Like, get out of here with that. Get out of here with that. I get it. Houston is injured, similar to how Baylor's been injured, but this is a damn good Houston team. I think, you know, it's also the fact that Houston's played four games in eight days, you know, but I mean, that's really not too much of an excuse anymore, but, you know, fatigue is a factor, and, you know, Houston definitely needs some rest, you know, Houston's already in anyway, you know, teams that are close to the tournament they've beaten, there's only, there's a team that they, that could be in the tournament, but, you know, eighth because of the NCAA's rules, you know, getting in the way, hit hit Oklahoma State, um, and then, you know, the rest of the AAC, which Houston pretty much dominated for the most part until, you know, the injuries finally got to them in that Memphis game the first time. So, I again, I don't know where these analysts are coming from. You know, Houston is at best the five seed themselves, unless they can win the American Championship and put themselves on that pedestal to be a four seed, you know, by dominating the AAC tournament. But I don't, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. We'll talk more about conference tournaments here in a moment. I have to go back up and let's see. Yeah, there, there's some more, you know, stuff, all these conference tournaments here that I need to talk about. There's also some more SEC stuff. We haven't touched on the SEC at all because Texas A&M, they're, they're itching, you know, closer towards, you know, getting on the good side of the bubble by beating Alabama. And Alabama, on the other hand, they're making the wrong type of mistakes. We're talking... They made some terrible mistakes against LSU. 
that cost the NBA. Remember, LSU is another team that's been in a free fall after having such a good start. And LSU got, they did what they needed to do. Yeah, they had to go to overtime to do it, but they needed, they, they got it. LSU got the victory they needed. And Tennessee, I'm surprised that Tennessee even had the three ball. I'm surprised Tennessee was that good at the three. I'm, I'm sitting here completely shocked. Like, Arkansas was getting whipped for a good chunk of this game until the Vols, you know, you know, lost the lead and had to hang on late. I mean, the Vols still won the game, you know. So, I mean, it, it, I'm sitting here just perplexed. Where did this come from? Like, I'm sitting here, wait, they're first in the SEC in three-point percentage? What? Tennessee? That Tennessee that has no offense? But, yeah, that Tennessee. That's a good Tennessee team, you know, and, and we all know by now that Oscar Sheboy is the player of the year, national player of the year. Let, let, let's give it to him already. Give it to him. Dude has done double-double after double-double after double-double all season long. Like, this man has done what he needed to do all season long. My goodness. My goodness. So, you know. Let, 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 let's go back and talk about, you know, the bubble, the uh, some tournament teams, you know, some teams that have, are, have clinched, and some others that, you know, are going to be going to the EIT instead of going to the NCAA tournament. Because Texas State is one of the first teams that will be going to the NIT. In fact, Louisiana, the team they lost to, will be going to the Sun Belt Championship, which is insanity to me. This is March. You know, you got teams on the bubble like Oregon getting blown out, you know, by Washington State of all teams. So Oregon's going to have to win the Pac-12 tournament to even get in this time. You know, Florida, the, the, they they are on the better side of the equation, but they needed the victory against Kentucky anyway. I still think, you know, they needed that help. And, you know, Florida's going to have to do some damage in the SEC tournament right now. They're going to have to do damage. And I just don't think, you know, if Florida loses... That, that, I think that'll be it for them, you know. You know, you just, you know, those teams like UTEP, which had to kill UNT's at-large hopes by snapping the 15-game winning streak they had, which is sad. I don't want that. But now UNT has to win the CUSA tournament, or at least get very close with UAB to get in, you know. So they're go so UNT and UAB are going to have to have a thriller in the CUSA championship in order to have... You know, a chance at it. You know, BYU, sadly, on the wrong side of the bubble. They got beat by San Francisco. Like, they pretty much, they've been playing like a team that's also been in free fall. Like, they're a Michigan, Michigan State, Indiana, uh, Oregon-type team. Sad. Sad for the Cougars. Because they had the victories. They had the victories in non-conference play. They needed the victories in conference play, and they couldn't get them. And they couldn't get the win in the West Coast tournament, you know, to, you know, help them out a little bit. Because, you know, BYU and San Francisco are basically battling for who's going to DIT and who's going to March Madness. Because, yeah, so BYU, take yourselves on to DIT. Go on ahead, you know, go right in there. And let's go back to the Big Ten for a minute because, you know, Nebraska, again, they beat Wisconsin. Wisconsin didn't have Johnny Davis, you know, for quite some time afterwards. And, you know, Illinois, they clinched a share of the Big Ten title. You know, Wisconsin's loss to Nebraska helped them do that. And Iowa wouldn't take the game from Illinois. Like, Iowa had the chances. They couldn't hit the foul shots either. So, you know, Illinois, able to get it done. Kofi Coburn, able to get it done. So, Illinois and Wisconsin share a Big Ten title, but, you know, again, there, there's teams on the wrong side of the bubble that are going to need some help. They're going to need some help. BYU is going to need some help. Indiana, Oregon. Uh, Xavier is a team that honestly needs to start worrying now, too, because I, I genuinely don't think Xavier has it either, you know, at this point, because, I mean, they were, they were on a, they were in a good spot earlier, but now not so much. You know, Michigan heading on the right side of the bubble. Again, big week for them. They got what they needed done. So the bubble is going to be crazy. So now we can get to the first three champions that have punched their tickets. Aside from the Jacksonville, Jacksonville State conundrum, 
There are three other teams that have clinched their bids. Congratulations to Longwood. Your first ever tournament bid, baby. You whipped Winthrop from three-point range. Whipped them all day long. Took them out to the pasture and shot them up. Good job by you, Longwood Lancers. Go on and make some magic happen in the NCAA tournament for us. Murray State. Team that is leaving the OVC, heading on over to the Missouri Valley. They out they outlasted Moorhead State in the OVC championship, whipped on Belmont. They got it done. They got it done. And in the Missouri Valley, a team, you know, that's also leaving. So so Murray State's leaving the OVC and Loyola leaving the, the Missouri Valley to go to the Yates End. Yeah, y'all y'all remember that? Yeah. Loyola, they got revenge on Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa, unfortunately, I believe they will be heading on to the NIT. It's pretty sad for them, but, you know, that's the price you pay when you win the regular season title and you don't beat somebody in the conference tournament. That's the price you pay. So you and I, NIT, Loyola to the NCAA tournament. There will be no other bids from the NBC no bid stealers to the OBC. A lot of people were worried about that as well. You know, but Murray State quieted those rumors of a two-bid Ohio Valley Conference. So Loyola, they got revenge on you and I. They got revenge on Drake. You know, and Drake had the, you know, Drake was probably tired, man, because they had to beat Missouri State in overtime. But, you know, Loyola, big win against Drake in Arch Madness. You know, the finale to Arch Madness, the finale to the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament in a thrilling game in which Drake, you know, didn't really play too well. And neither did Loyola, but I mean, Loyola made the plays when it mattered. They made the shots when it mattered, you know, because, I mean, Drake had stretches to where they just did not score. Like, there were stretches for both teams when it didn't score for quite some time. But, you know, Loyola got it in the end, so... There we go. We got three champions set. And now, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Seven days left in this season before the tournament begins, baby. And I am excited. Monday, you're going to want to tune in to see the SoCon and Sunbelt crown their champions along with the West Coast Conference semifinals. Again, there is there's still a potential for a four-bid West Coast Conference, but that lies only in Santa Clara's hands. So we'll see what they can do. Um, the Summit, A Sun, uh, Horizon, Northeast Conference, CAA, and Summit League will crown their champions on Tuesday. The ACC starts their first round on Tuesday. So I want to stay tuned for that. On Wednesday, you got the Pac 12, SEC, Big 10, Big 12, Big East first round games and the Patriot League crowning their champion along with the ACC's second round. You know, Thursday you got the ACC, Big East, Pac-12, and Big 12 quarterfinals. You got the SEC and Big 10 second rounds. The American first round, again, the American teeter-tottering on two or three bids right now. So the American can get a bid stealer because Memphis is in, I think. Houston is obviously in. But a bid stealer can come from this conference. So be wary of that. And then Friday, there's not, again, Thursday and Friday, you know, kind of more, you know, about, you know, semifinals and quarterfinals and stuff like that for the major conferences. So the ACC, Big East, Pac 12, and Big 12 have their semifinals. The SEC and Big 10 and the American have their quarterfinal games. And then Saturday, a lot of championships. The ACC, the Big East, Pac 12, Big 12. You know, those four conferences there will crown their champions. The MEAC, the America East, the MAC, you know, with two A's. The MAC, you know, the Mid-American Conference, MAC, you know, that, that MAC. Uh, the SWAC, the Big Sky, Conference USA, the WAC, Big West, and Southland crown their champions. Along with the Mountain West, you know, who's going to get four bids. Could be five, you know. There, there is a potential for a bid stealer for the Mountain West. I do want to say that. Uh, so the American, the SEC, and the Big Ten will also have their semifinals along with some other conferences as well. And then Sunday, last day, you know, Selection Sunday will be right after all these five conference championships. And these five 
are the Ivy League, the Big Ten, the SEC, the American, and the Eight Ten. All five of those champions will be the final champions to be crowned on Selection Sunday. And everything will be mostly finalized by Saturday night. So, you know, the committee, you know, the committee um, chairman met, you know, was on CBS earlier. And it was like, yeah, we're going to settle most of the Saturday night. So, you know, Sunday, whatever happens on Sunday still will matter. But, you know, most of the field, you know, I think will be set regardless before Selection Sunday. It's just these five games, you know, are going to be intriguing. So keep your eyes on all of these conference tournament finals, especially, you know, especially, you know, some of these lower conference games, you know, they, they, these ones are going to be even more interesting, I think, than some of the major conferences, you know. So there's only four questions left in the regular season. There's only four questions left. Who will steal bids? Who will get off the bubble? Who will be worried on the bubble? Yes, who will be worried, you know, on the wrong side of the bubble? And who will be the one seeds? Those are my four questions. You know, I know there's going to be like, well, well what about the play-in? Who's going to be in the play-in? We know there's going to be some teams, you know. You know, th there's a reason I said the bubble. So, you know, who's going to be on? Who's going to be on the wrong side? Who's going to be on the right side? Who's going to be on the wrong side of the bubble? Those are your playing questions right there. So, teams that are on the bubble, you need to be on life alert. Teams that are aching for a one seed, there's not a lot that I think you're going to get a one seed. You know, I'm sorry to teams like Wisconsin, you know, despite the fact that analytics, you know, and experts want to say that Wisconsin is a one seed. They are not. You know, there's still some teams, you know, in the power conferences anyway, that need to be worried. You know, don't lose early on in your conference tournaments teams that want to be one seeds don't don't lose okay so that's gonna do it i cannot wait for next sunday because we're gonna end off our regular season coverage there and i'll come back you know after selection sunday on the night of the national championship to tell you to well react to the national championship so just two more videos left in the season and there's going to be something tomorrow. Yes, there will be something tomorrow because um, thanks to USFL for the save. So I'll see you all tomorrow for that USFL video because we need to drop that. Because thank you for the USFL finally saying, hey, we're going to release our schedule. So until then, enjoy this week, everybody, because it's a lot of basketball, a lot of good basketball. And I'm excited for it. So I'll see you all next Sunday. Have a good night and take care.